happened. SpaceX installed the most powerful rocket booster ever assembled on the launch mount with giant robot arms yesterday. It's not the first such trip for Starship's super heavy first stage in general, nor for this specific booster, which we have now come to know fondly as Booster 7 or B7. I know I shouldn't say this, it might be a little bit of a jinx, but I hope this is the final time before it launches. As of 2.55pm, SpaceX has begun using two giant arms attached to the pad's launch tower to lift the approximately 70 meter or 230 foot tall rocket onto the launch mount. The whole process was completed in just half an hour. So impressive! Yeah, while Musk says that the ultimate goal is to use those arms to catch Starship and Super Heavy out of mid-air, their current purpose is to take the place of a tall and unwieldy crane that would otherwise need to be used to lift either stage. The arms are an extremely complex solution, but they do allow SpaceX to lift, install, and remove Starship stages remotely, and insulate those processes from wind conditions, which cranes are sensitive to. Once fully secured by the mount's 20 hold down clamps, the booster will be connected to the ground systems, allowing SpaceX to prepare B-7 to start the next stage of pre-flight testing as early as today. At the time of this video, SpaceX had a closure scheduled for Thursday, March 30th from 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. And I don't think it's for Shift 24's rollout because if that's the case, the closure will be early at about 6 a.m. So maybe we'll see some testing for Booster 7, but I don't think we will see another static fire test before liftoff. And it's all thanks once again to Lab Padre for always providing the best of live coverages. After SpaceX is completely confident in Booster 7, it will be mated with its companion once more, Ship 24, as soon as the earliest of April. Speaking of Ship 24's progress, its flight termination system box has been readied for launch. When all said and done, the combined massive launch system reaches nearly 400 feet tall at around 390 feet to be more precise. And combined with the orbital launch stand on which it rests, the whole thing is at about 475 feet high, which is taller than the Great Pyramid of Giza. As for when the orbital launch test will actually take place, it's not currently clear. All final preparation will take some time, but the company is definitely still aiming to make that happen in April. Of course, that's not all SpaceX needs to do to get Starship flight ready. Receiving a launch license from the Federal Aviation Administration is on the list. That can't happen until the regulator has completed an environmental assessment, which is a process that could take weeks. That's not all the remarkable activity going on at Starbase, as Ship 26 was also lifted and moved to the production site for engine installation. There, it received the RVEC-205, and then yesterday, the 212 was next. We haven't seen RVAX in a while, but when we do, it's always exceptional, right? So it comes as no surprise that SpaceX will test this strange, naked Starship prototype even before Starship's orbital flight. While Starbase's team is racing, SpaceX's Falcon 9 is also heading to its 2023 target. In fact, they just completed the 21st launch of 2023 already on March 29th. During that flight countdown, SpaceX's launch team was stationed inside a launch control center just south of Cape Canaveral Space Force Station to monitor key systems on the Falcon 9 rocket and at the launch pad. SpaceX began loading super-chilled, densified kerosene and liquid oxygen propellants into the Falcon 9 vehicle at T-35 minutes. Helium pressurant also flowed into the rocket in the last half hour of the countdown. In the final seven minutes before liftoff, the Falcon 9's Merlin main engines were thermally conditioned for flight through a procedure known as chill-down. The Falcon 9's guidance and range safety systems were also configured for launch. After liftoff, the Falcon 9 rocket vectored its 1.7 million pounds of thrust produced by nine Merlin engines to steer southeast over the Atlantic. The Falcon 9 exceeded the speed of sound in about one minute, then shut down its nine main engines two and a half minutes after liftoff. 
The booster stage separated from the Falcon 9's upper stage, then fired pulses from cold gas control thrusters and extended titanium grid fins to help steer the vehicle back into the atmosphere. Two braking turns slowed the rocket for landing on the drone ship. Just read the instructions around 410 miles or 660 kilometers downrange, approximately eight and a half minutes after liftoff. It was the fourth launch and landing for this particular booster, SpaceX wrote in a mission description. The Falcon 9's upper stage, meanwhile, continued hauling the Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit, deploying all 56 satellites as planned 65 minutes after liftoff, which it confirmed via Twitter. SpaceX has now lofted more than 4,200 Starlink satellites overall, according to astrophysicist and satellite tracker Jonathan McDowell. Those numbers will continue to grow far into the future, as Elon Musk's company has permission to deploy 12,000 Starlink satellites into LEO and has applied for permission for another 30,000 on top of that. However, having a successful spaceflight is not an easy thing. In just two weeks, Boeing's Starliner has been delayed two times. The first crewed flight of Boeing's Starliner astronaut taxi has now been pushed back several additional months with liftoff now targeted for July 21st at the earliest. Last month, Boeing and NASA said that the Starliner's astronaut debut, a mission to the International Space Station called Crew Flight Test, was on track to launch in April. That timeline was pushed back a bit last week when NASA officials said that CFT will lift off after Axe 2, a private flight to the orbiting lab operated by Houston company Axiom Space that's tentatively targeted for early May. But a spring liftoff for CFT is now off the table as agency officials announced on March 29th, we've deliberated and decided that the best launch attempt is no earlier than July 21st for CFT. Steve Stitch, manager of NASA's commercial crew program, said during a press conference. Stitch and others on yesterday's call also cited several reasons for the latest delay, being that there will be considerable traffic at the ISS this spring, for example, with the X-2 lifting off in May and SpaceX's next robotic cargo mission targeted for June. CFT's launch site, Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida, will be busy over the coming months as well, as United Launch Alliance plans to fly a mission for the U.S. Space Force from the Cape with an Atlas V rocket this spring. The first ever liftoff of the company's new Vulcan Centaur vehicle is targeted for May as well from the site. The CFT will employ an Atlas V as well. NASA also wants a bit more time to analyze data about Starliner's various components, such as its parachute system, before putting astronauts on the vehicle, Stitch said. And the agency, as well as Boeing, plan to conduct one more ground test of a parachute subsystem, the chute that pulls off Starliner's forward heat shield. That trial is targeted for May, Stitch added. At this time, there's really no issues or concerns with the parachute system, Stitch said. The parachutes are installed in the vehicle, they're in good shape, it's just a matter of going through all that data and looking at the data and making sure we're really ready to go fly safely. The CFT will send NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams to the ISS for a roughly 8-day stay. And if all goes well with that test flight, NASA will likely certify Starliner for operational astronaut missions to the orbiting lab. One private American spacecraft is already performing these crewed taxi missions, SpaceX's Crew Dragon, which earlier this month launched on its sixth contracted astronaut flight to the ISS for NASA. Unfortunately, that's it for today's episode, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.